Really, Godox? Really? Sending me out a wireless lavalier system when it's 90 degrees outside and it feels like 100. There's actually a, a, a heat advisory all the way until like 8 or 9 o'clock or wherever at night. How am I supposed to do this? Come on, man. <laughs> nah, it's not Godox's fault. But Godox sent out the WECS Kit 2. This is a wireless lavalier system that is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. It's going to be the very best budget entry level I would say wireless lavalier system for people who are getting the likes of the Sony ZV-E10, maybe the Alpha 6700, uh, the Sony, um, I would say ZV-E1, and possibly the Mark II of the Sony ZV-E10. So feature squid here, I emailed the Godox representative asking them if there is a list of Sony cameras that this hot shoe technology connection does not work with. And they emailed me back and telling me that it was only the Sony ZV-1F that that does not take advantage of this technology, but every other Sony camera should be fine. I have the Sony ZV E10, and I also have the Sony ZV1 and the Sony Alpha 6100. The Sony Alpha 6100 and the Sony ZV1 does not work. I get this error message that I'll put on screen from both cameras, but the Sony ZV E10, it does work with. This leads me to believe that either A, it's because it's the Mark I of the Sony ZV1 line, and obviously the Sony Alpha 6100 is a super old camera so that makes sense for that camera but as far as the sony zv1 i, I imagine like i said it's either because it's a sony zv1 mark one and that this technology doesn't want work with or it's a setting that i changed somewhere inside the camera that's causing it not to work and maybe i have to refactor reset my camera or wherever but i'm not going to do that because i have the camera the way i want it as far as the settings and stuff goes um and there's no way for me to verify if it works with the mark ii i have no idea but i would imagine it probably does because it came out after the sony zv uh, I would say E10, but it also might just because those are point and shoot cameras as far as the Sony ZV line goes and the Sony ZV E line is more of an APS-C and full frame cameras. So again, there might be some disparity between the two. I have no way of really confirming that or whatever, but just a rule of thumb, if you have the Sony ZV line, I would go ahead and let you know that if you are going to upgrade in the future to maybe one of their APS-C cameras or their full frame cameras, you could still get this system and just use the line out of the receiver to go straight into the camera's microphone port and you will still get really good audio. If you plan on not upgrading in the future or wherever and still keeping your point and shoot camera for whatever reason, you can still get this wireless lavalier system. You're just going to have to get the $100 version or wherever and not this $130 something dollar version because the $100 version pretty much is the same mic quality. It's the same system. It just does not have that hot shoe technology wherever attached to the actual receiver itself and again you can still future proof yourself by getting the hot shoe you know version if you have one of those point and shoot cameras just like i said use the line out until you get the sony zv e10 or maybe the sony alpha 6700 both of those are really popular for entry level content creation and with the rumors uh of the sony zv e10 mark ii just around the corner apparently uh this is still going to be a very good option to get instead of going out and getting like the DJI system wherever, which is anywhere from a hundred and something dollars, 200 to maybe $300. And then you have to get the hot shoe, you know, adapter or wherever, which is another $40. And don't get me wrong, the DJI system and other systems out there that have this hot shoe connectivity, even from Sony are really nice options and everything. And they're really good systems. They're just really expensive for people who are going to be getting into, you know, budget entry level content creation where Whereas this system at this price point with a hot shoe connectivity, it's very compelling in my personal opinion. And a little spoiler alert, I think the audio sounds pretty good. All right, now, so all of that out the way, I do want to go ahead and go over briefly what you get in the box. You do get three different furry windscreens or whatever, because there is actually a microphone on the back of the receiver, as well as the microphones or whatever that you have inside the box. I want to go ahead and say that all these microphones sound the same. So there's really no point for me to cover the microphone on the back or whatever for the audio test. So we won't do that. But essentially, again, they all sound the same. You just get a little bit more of a proximity effect because essentially, if you're holding your camera from a vlogging standpoint or sitting behind the tripod, you are going to be a little bit more closer to the actual back of the microphone. So just keep that in mind. But you do have a switch to toggle 
on and off wherever the microphone for the back so that's pretty nice you do have a digital and analog little switch or wherever so that means if you're running the line out or wherever because maybe you have the you know the sony camera or wherever that does not you know work with this and you're planning on getting like the sony uh zv e10 or another camera in the future you could still pick this up and it will be able to um future proof yourself pretty much because again it's still going to be able to work with the said camera now you have the power button or wherever to turn off the receiver and turn it on so you don't really drain the battery and stuff you do have a plus and minus we'll get to that in a second but you do have a relink if you hold it down and you do have a mode if you hold that down which will for the mode it will switch you from mono to stereo so with these plus and minuses because when you hook this up to your the intelligent hot shoe of your actual camera you won't be able to set the gain inside of your actual camera but if if you're listening to your audio because the sony zv e10 does have a headphone jack or you're doing what i'm doing as far as recording all this into obs to be able to not have to worry about syncing all this stuff up in post you can listen to your headphones or wherever and run the HDMI cable into your capture card, which I'm using a cam link from Elgato. And I use the Wavelink software for EQing all this stuff and seamlessly having it all tied together. It's not the best software out there, but I have the Wave XLR or wherever. And I'm actually running this microphone through the Comica, you know, interface or wherever and having that showed up into the Wavelink software. And again, the cam link can be linked into the Wavelink software. So I can listen to this microphone with my headset that's, you know, attached to my PC and everything. And I can turn up the volume and turn it down or wherever the intensity, if that's what you want to do. The good thing about the Wavelink software, though, you can add VSTs and plugins. So you can already have eq set for this wireless lavalier system inside of wavelink and you could probably do the same thing if you have just a cam link or a capture card to capture the audio from your camera you can just go ahead and put it into obs use some free plugins or whatever for obs or whatever to eq this microphone and essentially just record you know what i'm saying and there's downsides to it people say sd card recording is better don't use the obs even if you're capturing 4k all that stuff look i've been using this method or whatever for at least probably like a year and a half as far as being in this room recording into obs 4k 1080p whatever it may be and streaming and doing all this stuff or whatever and never had a problem never had an issue with that being said again having the audio adjust right there being able to run it you know straight through a usb capture card or something like that capturing the audio into obs having free plugins wherever to get the microphone to sound good and then using those same plugins in your editing software for when you take your camera out and about vlogging and all that stuff you have those save presets or wherever so you're gonna capture good audio wherever no matter where you go you're still gonna have the same audio sound and like i said you have the usb type c connection right here to charge it up or wherever if you need to on the bottom of the actual transmitter you have a usb type c nothing on the sides on the front you have a green light that will let you know that hey you're paired with the actual receiver and then when you took out the other microphone this other light will pop up once you hook this up to your intelligent hot shoe this little light over here will turn blue to let you know that it's activated if it doesn't turn blue and you get that error message then you know that you're going to have to use the line out and obviously switch the mode respectively you can't use both modes at the same time it's just the way the device works and then down here you have the push wherever to de-attach it from your camera over here if you tap this button once you will go ahead and turn on the denoise or wherever which is the digital little processing or wherever we'll test that outside on the seven rhymes one and some other lavalier systems or wherever that have done reviews on in the past it will be linked in the description these don't really work that well but i'm curious because godox is more of a premium brand in my personal opinion as far as in the space of having you know a camera set accessories and content creation accessories i'm wondering if this is actually any good although it's super went uh, hot outside i doubt it would do anything so we're gonna have some fans going on in the office and i'm gonna see if it does anything in here but again tap it to you know turn it off or wherever and it turns back green from orange and then you have the relink or wherever with the transmitter that you could do from there and you also have a separate power button or wherever so you can leave this on turn it off turn it back on or wherever from the action module it's not going to just stay on all the time if you don't need it to save again battery life and i'll put the battery expected life or wherever on screen so you guys can get a general sense inside the uh, carrying case obviously you have the three things with the contact pins or wherever to go in there you do have you know four different leds at the bottom wherever the carrying case on the back or wherever is this nice little 
I don't know, rigid kind of filling thing and then a USB type C. And then I'm pretty sure this is probably like a reset button, but yeah, overall nice little ch carrying case. And I'd say it's a pretty slim, easy to fit in a kit to a camera bag. You do get another carrying case, it, you know, with this own little lanyard to wear attached, you can put all the cables that come with it here. And then under here, you put the charging case. I'm not really sure why this flap is separated, but you know, it's a nice little touch because maybe you you could put something else on top i don't know um but you know what i'm saying overall it's pretty nice there's nothing too wrong or whatever bad about it it feels pretty good and decent or wherever as far as a carrying case goes you get a small usb type c cable you do get your trs to trs cable and your trrs to trs cable uh you get your little manual and you know quick start guide but it does work with the sony zve 10 and that's what we're going to be testing it today but let's go ahead and test the audio because i've been rambling a little bit too long all right so this is an audio test of the Godox WECS Kit 2 with the actual receiver from the transmitter turned down all the way to the lowest volume I could possibly get on the actual receiver. I do have my computer that's been running over here and I do have this fan or wherever that's you know turned on or wherever behind me that's blowing. I have some AC blowing and I do have a fan that I'm going to end up turning on three different levels that is probably like an arm's length and a half away from me pointing at me because again it's hot out and uh, the studio lights and everything like that so this is the ambient room I would say noise at the lowest level possible um, and this is how it sounds all right so now I'm going to turn the fan that's an arm's length and a half away from me to level one now, I do want to state that this fan is going to be turning off and on because it's set to turn on if the room gets 80 degrees. So, again, it's smart, intelligent uh, fan or whatever. It's a really nice fan from Govee, by the way. Um, and again, this fan or whatever is not, so this is the way it sounds. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fan to level two. And this is the way it sounds, and the Govee fan behind me is still off right now. So, again, this is the way it sounds. All right, so now I'm going to turn the fan on to a level three. All right, so this is the way it sounds on level three. And again, on the lowest setting on the actual receiver, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fan off so you can hear while this fan is off or wherever, just in a room temperature environment or wherever with just the actual PC going and the ambient noise. All right, so I turned off the fan and the only thing that's really making noise inside the room is the PC and this is the way it sounds. All right, so before we head outside, I did want to go ahead and test the denoiser or wherever on the microphone set. I forgot to do that, so here's that test. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the actual denoiser. Again, if you hit the orange button, As you, as you can possibly see, it's already activated. So let's go ahead and do that. The fan is on level one. It's kind of on the side of the fan or wherever so you can hear how it's doing. How's this sound or wherever with the AI noise reduction or wherever. Again, no VSTs, no plugins or anything like that being used. This is just the way it sounds. I'm gonna turn the fan up to level two. All right, so this is the way it sounds or wherever on level two. This is how I guess it would reject the sound or wherever with the digital denoise. Again, most people are not a fan of this kind of stuff or wherever. I personally don't think any microphones out there or whatever do a really good job to justify to keep putting them in stuff or wherever. But I think in the future, we will get to one that's going to be, um, I would say, somewhat more usable for people who want to use something like this. But as of right now, it's, it's a hit or miss kind of thing. All right, so we're on the fan's maxis level or wherever as far as the error and the fan and stuff goes. Let me know how my voice sounds. Let me know if it's doing anything to my voice and sounding weird or wherever or artificial. How is it doing as far as rejecting that noise and that wind? Again, I don't think this is very suitable as far as uh, being realistic or wherever. You're probably not going to be trying to record something where with a fan blowing this like this close at this, like I would say, this high of a DB or whatever. So again, that's just my personal opinion. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually turn up the volume on the actual receiver to, I would say, 
somewhat of a normal level, I would believe, for this kind of scenario. And then after that, we'll go ahead and try it with some plugins and VSTs. All right, so this is the way it sounds in the room or wherever with just a PC on, no fans on right now. The Govi fan might turn on in a, in a couple minutes, but what I wanna go ahead and say is that this is, again, the way it sounds. All I did was click that plus once, and I found that this is probably the audio level that I would leave it at. Now, if you're outside, maybe turn it up a little bit more, but in an unsound treated room, I would not turn it up anymore and it can go louder. But essentially, this is the way it sounds. Um, let me know what you guys think. Here's that noise floor. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fan however to level one. The fan is on level one. Here is that noise floor. Now I'm gonna turn the fan on to level two. Again, here is that noise floor. And all right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan level up to level three. Now the fan is on level three. Here is that noise floor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fan. All right, so the fan is turned off and I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the microphone from myself and hold it in front of me as a I guess sound test or wherever handling test for the noise. All right, so here is the noise floor. Here, how is this? It sounds or wherever with me, you know, touching the microphone, hitting it a little bit and everything like that. And uh, here's the handling noise moving it around and everything in front of me because I know some people like to do this with their wireless lavalier systems. Here's that, I would say, imitation or wherever of that. And you can see how it sounds or wherever. Hopefully, I'm. Um, you know, further enough away from the microphone so it can sound pretty good. But again, I think this is the usable audio level. Again, all I did was hit the plus once to up the dB or whatever for the camera. I wouldn't go any higher than this, especially, like I said, indoors. But honestly, I think that it sounds pretty decent or whatever. And again, we haven't even, I would say, added VSTs or plugins or anything. Super simple setup. This is what it sounds like with some VSTs and stuff added in the normal ambiency of a say of this room. Again, no fans are on or anything like that. It's just my PC going and I'll try to put on screen the VSTs that wherever that I use. It's some presets that I use for my normal microphones for streaming and you know the microphone I was using earlier or wherever. So it's not a EQ that's really dialed in. But the important things is is that I added a DSer, I added a noise gate and I added a background noise removal. Um, that I you know highly recommend or wherever again there's videos out there of how to get these plugins from Elgato or just you know free plugins out there that you can use so you can do it for yourself. Um, the only one that I would recommend adding on top of this and I probably will go ahead and do it here is now you're probably hearing I would say the actual uh, echo removal or wherever that I paid for and it's from Crunkle Pop if I remember correctly or Crumble Pop something like that I'll leave a link to it down in the description but essentially is is you can pay for it you can download it wherever drag that plugin into davinci resolve and as long as you don't open up the actual um i would say app or their separate you know dashboard app or wherever on your pc um i've been using it for free so again you could do it that way or whatever but it's an ai thing or wherever i want to turn up the stuff too strong but if you're in un an unsound treated room or wherever you're gonna want some echo noise removal and even if you don't like the actual EQs to uh, I did to my voice, you could re do the noise removal and then just do the uh, echo removal or whatever, and that's gonna be good for you. Outside, probably just background noise removal, depending on where you are, maybe an echo removal, but I would say, you know, maybe a noise gate, maybe, you know, background noise removal, adjust the thresholds and stuff like that. And like I said, you get yourself a really good lavalier system. All right. so. I, I'm going to try to do an outside test or wherever, so we'll see how it goes. Um, it's going to be a quick test just because, like I said, it is hot outside. All right, so this is the test, the outside door, I would say test or wherever, of the Godox WECS Kit 2. That's a long name to remember or wherever to do something like this. But again, the, the sun is out. It always beams on this side 
of my space or wherever. So this is the way it sounds. Um, and again, I haven't touched anything for the audio, wherever it's the same, I would say audio volume that I was using inside of my place. And again, this is the way it sounds beams on this side of my space or wherever. So this is the way it sounds. Um, and again, I haven't touched anything for the audio, wherever it's the same, I would say audio volume that I was using inside of my place. And again, this is the way it sounds. It's pretty hot outside. Yes, I could take this uh, hoodie off or wherever, but I'm actually using a short sleeve, uh, you know, moisture wickening thing underneath or wherever. So it's not too hot, but again, it does feel like it's probably like around a hundred. And this one is actually, it may look thick or wherever, but it's not that thick. Um, but again, this is what it sounds like outside. I don't know if you guys can see it or wherever, but I did go ahead and just turn it on. So again, this is the way it sounds outside or wherever for this test or something like that. And I'll try to overlay the clips of me talking about this stuff or wherever with EQs and without EQs. So again, this is what it sounds like. It looks super nice wherever on top of the camera. I don't know if you guys can see it or wherever, but I did go ahead and just turn it on. So again, this is the way it sounds outside or wherever for this test or something like that. And I'll try to overlay the clips of me talking about this stuff or wherever with EQs and without EQs. So again, this is what it sounds like. It looks super nice wherever on top of the camera, you know, not having any wires or wherever. And like I said, I can back up and still capture my audio wherever I can, you know, move forward and stuff like that. I can freely talk and move around and everything. Thing about the distance test and everything with these wires transmitters, it's a no brainer. You don't want to go, you know, super far away and obviously leaving your camera somewhere and trying to do that stuff wherever with the kind of world we live in you're if you do something like that somebody's just going to take your camera the thing about the distance test and everything with these wires transmitters it's a no-brainer you don't want to go you know super far away and obviously leaving your camera somewhere and trying to do that stuff wherever with the kind of world we live in you're if you do something like that somebody's just going to take your camera like i said you're don't you don't want to put anything between you and the actual receiver or wherever and on top of that you probably don't want to turn your back to it or wherever most people ask that kind of stuff or wherever in the comment section i've seen people ask that for you know reviews and everything like that and it's like come on guys like use common sense like i said you're don't you don't want to put anything between you and the actual receiver or wherever and on top of that you probably don't want to turn your back to it or wherever most people ask that kind of stuff or wherever in the comment section i've seen people ask that for you know reviews and everything like that and it's like come on guys like use common sense so after listening back to the footage of the Godox WECS Kit 2, do I recommend this wireless lavalier system? And I would say yes, with the caveat of if you are using that point and shoot, I would say line of cameras and you are going to upgrade to the Sony ZV-E10 or any of the Alpha line or wherever that's coming out, or maybe even getting the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, like I am previously mentioned, just go ahead and get this. It's going to be uh, future proof to wherever. So you are going to have good quality audio, I think, in my personal opinion, going forward. And on top of that, there is, like I said, that $100 one if you just don't plan on doing it or wherever, but you're still going to have the wire. With that being said, it does not have a lapel mic jack or wherever, which some people might consider a con. But for what this is and what this does, especially at this price point, the only other options out there are going to be the even more expensive ones from, you know, DJI, Sony themselves and etc. So again, for good quality audio for technically three different microphones and having that hot shoe connectivity. And then on top of that, you still have the ability to turn up the audio wherever on the actual receiver itself. And the denoise, in my personal opinion, is really not that bad or wherever, at least outside. And that's the only way I would use it or wherever is outside. This is probably the most impressed that I've been with a denoiser or wherever on a wireless lavalier system. And that's just my personal opinion. I have like three different other ones and I have another one that's coming in pretty soon that I have to test or wherever. So again, that's just my personal experience. I'm not a professional when it comes to this kind of stuff or wherever, but just based off of what I've heard or wherever, I really do like it. I will also go ahead and say that I know this room is not, you know, sound treated, like I said, but with the echo test or wherever and using the echo remover inside or wherever, I just wouldn't recommend it. There was no version of it or wherever that I actually kind of like the audio from, which I felt like I have to do on all the other, I would say wireless lavalier systems that I have tested in the past. It feels like a must have. And on this, it just doesn't seem like it does what it's supposed to do 
And that just means that this, you know, is actually better quality in my personal opinion, even though you can still hear that echo wherever. And obviously, if I sit there and worked on the EQs for this wireless lavalier system, I could get it to sound even better or, you know, more usable for a use case scenario for YouTube and talk ahead videos. And I probably will do that in the future as far as nailing it down because I really do like this system. And those EQs were for these types of microphones anyways. So there is some disparity there. But overall, I'm really impressed, like I said, with this and how it sounds, especially for being under $200 and having three different microphones, having that hot shoe connectivity, future proofing yourself for any Sony cameras or whatever that's coming out in the future. I would imagine that this is going to work with. It's just it's like I said, it's kind of sad that it didn't work with my Sony ZV-1 because that's the kind of camera that I would take out, you know, in a little Celine bag or something like that and vlog with and still having to use their wire or whatever it's just kind of upsetting but at the same time like i said it might be a setting inside the camera or it might just be because it's a point and shoot or the, you know the mark one instead of the mark two again i have no way of verifying all that information but like i said inside the eq sounded pretty good would not use the echo remover outside or wherever sounds pretty good to me at least especially turning up the volume by one or wherever on the receiver outside inside i probably would not turn up the volume i would leave it on the lowest setting and then probably eq it from there and i think that's the best way you're going to get the sound or wherever because it's going to cut down on the reverberation and echo because the volume is not that high and then in post, you could adjust the DB, you know, and add the VSTs and plugins and do all that stuff. This is just very, very, I would say, new user friendly. And that's why I recommend it. And I thank Godox so much because this is a company that, you know, I've had my eye on for content creation gear for so long and them actually reaching out to me. It's just really surprising that they wouldn't want to work with a content creator like me, who is just a small content creator, you know what I'm saying? And I, I really do appreciate that. And like I said, they not only make, you know, these kind of stuff, but they also make cob lights and other content creation uh, accessories or whatever that you need for your live streams, for your talking head videos, for everything. So I will leave their Amazon store page down in the description, as well as the two versions of these microphone systems or whatever down there. They're all going to be affiliate links. If you're interested in any other wireless lavalier systems, a product review playlist should be popping up on your screen right now. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.